This time on Flipping Bangers, we want a taste of the simple life. Where's the engine, then? There is nothing that doesn't need to be there. With a true motoring icon. It really is a defining moment in car design. But simple. It is a flipping banger. Isn't always simple. Perhaps this love affair is only skin deep. Oh, I'm having a job to keep my feelings in my face. It looks dramatic, and it is. Oh, we bought the car, and now we've got all the problems. We've said goodbye to our day jobs and invested our own hard-earned cash as we try and make it in the cutthroat world of second-hand cars. You've got to buy well, but you've got to sell well. We have a goal. We need to double our money. If we put 500 quid in, we need to see £1,000 back. But we're forced to the very bottom of the market. We buy cars that nobody else wants. Who else would buy that car? <laughs> Can we keep our business afloat, flipping bangers? There's so many things to do to this car. We've turned our backs on our regular jobs and attempted to carve out a new living by buying and selling cheap cars. Evicted from our previous workshop by angry neighbours, Will has sorted us out with a new base, and apart from having no working toilet, it feels like home. We've raided our bank accounts, and this time we have enough to invest around 500 to 1,500 pounds on each car. Oh, lovely. Can we get a French car? Of course we can get a French car. We can get any sort of car you want. If you want a French car, you can have one. Just depends what sort. Well, I was thinking of maybe Renault 5, or my absolute favourite, Renault 12, mm -hmm. or maybe something really obscure, like a Fuego. Don't know if we'd find one now. Renault 16, 11 Electronique, something, something offbeat, I think, and that's where we should be. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I don't really know very much about any of those cars, to be honest. Maybe a 2CV. Yeah. I get 2CV, I really do. Only problem I've got with them is that they're a bit trendy, aren't they? Yeah. And also, it's really difficult to find a good one that's cheap. We might be barking up the wrong tree here with the whole car thing. I mean, how about a van? French van? Be good. Oh, thank you. Will's ridiculous idea of the van is immediately binned. And my idea of something obscure is semi-binned. So we stick to the 2CV. I've looked at every single 2CV on the market for under £3,000. And that, uh -huh. So that's discounted the modern cars, because they're obviously more than that. And I've discounted all the white cars, because I don't particularly like the white cars. <laughs> and I've also discounted the ones that were really rotten. Good. So how many Good. do you think that's left us with? Uh, 14? No, it left us with two. No well, way. Yeah, two. And one <laughs> of those was sold within three hours of going up. You are kidding. I know. So that's we've got, amazing. We've got one to look at. They are flying out, as they say. I mean, people are just grabbing them. Well, that's, that's good news in some ways that they're flying out the door. The 2CV in question is a project car called Gloria that's no longer needed. Even in a rough state, it's £2,750, which is strong money for us. This must be little Gloria. She's she quite presentable, isn't she? She looks great, doesn't she? Hi, Kai, is it? It is. I'm Gus. Hi, uh, I'm Will. Nice to meet you. Thanks now, for coming. We've come to have a look at your glorious little car there. Marvellous. Uh, I take it you're a fan of these cars, then? Yeah, we've had a few 2CVs um, that my wife's passion more than mine. But, I mean, we bought Gloria because she's got all the right ingredients. So, uh, galvanised chassis, engine and gearbox run well. Most of the car is uh, it, it's fine. It needs some TLC. And, unfortunately, I can't take it to the next stage. So that's why we're selling a railer. I see, I see. Right. Make yourself at home. I'll be out in a moment. All right, bro. Cool. Thank you very much. So you've got to say, initially, it looks fantastic. So much better than I thought it would. Glorious from a distance. I don't think Gloria looks so glorious close up. I can already see that this car has got some problems. Okay. Hurt her feelings. Oh, poor little Glory. I do like her name and I love her colour, but I can't help but see exactly what you're looking at down there. That is rust. It's got a few rust problems. I, I get that. <laughs> These seats are a bit saggy. Yeah. They're sort of sat on the floor there. Here's the issue it's already been patched, 
It's been patched so long ago that the patches have rusted out. It just doesn't seem like a big enough problem to, to not purchase something that clearly is so glorious. Take, for example, what? this bonnet. Just look at that. <laughs> this is like the chin of a blue whale, isn't it? It feels rather gritty. Look at the, the patina in this rust here. Somebody is going to fall head over heels for this because if you want a 2CV that looks like it's been lived in in the south of France for 20 years, this is the one, isn't it? I just think it's absolutely fantastic. Oh, 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 where is it? Where's the engine then? Go on. It's written in there. Ah, oh, so it is. And look at that. It's got 602 written on it. Hey, what does 602 mean? Uh, oh, that denotes the capacity of the engine. It's a really diddy little engine. That's How many 10, horsepower? I think 29. But it's weird, because I've been in one of these with four people, and you just would not know that it's a 600cc engine. They have always been very, very capable cars. And no matter how small the engine is, it's always worked for them. This is a Good plus. Job. The only real minus at the moment is that welding, isn't it? Yeah, but that welding is counteracted by the galvanised chassis. We know it's got a galvanised chassis. Big goody points. Yeah. The interior is interesting and very, very basic. And <laughs> I think I've found uh, Gloria's little sister, Dolly, <laughs> in the back. <laughs> There's a lot of spares, isn't there? I think this is off of a Dolly. It's the right colour. Well, we know it drives and we know it stops, so shall we see if we can drive it? Yeah, it's not road legal, though, is it? Kai knew we'd want to have a drive, and almost certain that we weren't thieves, sent us off to a farmer mate's field. Of course, we had to trailer Gloria there. As test drives go, it's a bit severe. So it's the oldest story in motoring history. After the devastation of World War II, 1949, all the countries of Europe are striving to mobilise their rural communities. In Britain, they come up with a Land Rover which goes on to conquer the world. And in France, they invent the ability to drive three eggs across a field or deliver to modern day, deliver muesli in Hoxton Square. <laughs> Well, I don't know about eggs or muesli. I'm having a job to keep my fillings in my face at the moment. Talk about the car. <laughs> oh, OK. Right, well, the car itself is performing very nicely, all things considered. The wheels on the car will go round and round. The gears are very vague, but they do appear to be quite smooth, which is going to be a good thing. But I'm not surprised that it's doing all right, because this is what it was invented for. Yeah. And as for that being vague, I have no surprise there, because the linkage is... A vague thing made out of vague stuff, vaguely. It's uh, genius, absolutely it, genius. But I think we're in a good place with this car, aren't we? We've, yeah. got, we've got an engine that's holding together, we've got yeah. steering that steers, brakes that stop, gears yeah. that change. All we've got is a couple of big rusty patches that we're going to have to deal with. So as two CVs go for this price, I think this is probably good. I like it. The two CV joyously runs out of fuel, but we're sold on grabbing a sale. But will Kai let Gloria go for any less? <laughs> Hi. Hi, guys. How are you getting on? Well, we love it. Of course we love it. Anne wants to take it home, but it really depends on how much you want for the car. Well, we're asking 27.50. Yep. I think it's worth every penny of that. Mm. Ah, right, OK. So we've been having a chat. And uh, we were sort of thinking we might sort of come in with an offer of about sort of two two. I can't let it go for that. I think the car's worth more than that. Okay. But what about we split the difference and say two five? Go on, you got yourself a deal. <laughs> we'll leave it on the trailer. Excellent. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Nice to meet you both. Yeah, you yeah, too. Cheers. Thanks, guys. You too. Bye bye. Bye. I think we've done very well. <laughs> One internet bank transfer later, and we hit the road. Well. I love a deal that goes like that. Honest guy, honest car. Totally brilliant. Absolutely. I'm completely yeah. with you all the way. There's nothing better, is there? They're not trying to hoodwink you. No. You're not trying to rip them off. And actually, if you were nasty, <laughs> you're not going to get it any cheaper, are you? No. Well, we're going to be nasty anyway. <laughs> I mean, that is not in our nature. No, <laughs> it's just not. So what do you think about our beautiful little 2CV? I think we've done really well. I'm pretty convinced if we just took it down south, 
and advertise it down there, we'd make a profit. Yeah, but that's not going to happen, is it? Because that is the easy profit, and that's yeah. not in our blood, is it? No, it's not. But what do you reckon about profit then? Because, you know, you're going to oh, have a little look at the well, old I, the car I had, internet, I, I, yes? I had them up here <laughs> earlier, in actual fact. So, a car same age as ours. Yeah. There's one on here for 4,000. Okay. There's one on here for five and a half. Uh -huh. There's one on here for 6.2. Oh, that must be good. <laughs> yeah, but it, it just means that, that well, I think we should aim higher with this car. Yeah. I think we could double our money with it, definitely. Well, that's good. That is really good. I'm starting to feel the same as well. I was worried that when we were going out to get a 2CV, that it's such a close market. Mm -hmm. And there are other people out there know it much better than we do. Yeah, true. Uh, and it scared me. And we've spent a lot of money. But I've got a very nice car on the trailer. Yes, it's shabby around the edges. But it's all right. The next day, after nightmares full of rusty Citroens, we get the chance to assess the 2CV and work out a plan. Bonjour, monsieur. Ah, uh, bonjour. You know, uh, from back there, I was just looking at this paint, and I could never get bored of looking at this. The, the sort of chalkiness of it and the depth of it, it's just beautiful, isn't it? They are one of the classic car designs. They're so beautiful in their simplicity as well. Yeah. And that's what I like, you know, there is nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing on this car that doesn't need to be there. Yeah. It really is a defining moment in car design. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're completely right. But we need to define what we're going to do with this car, don't we? We need to work out what our master plan is going to be for it. Yeah, all right, OK. Well, <laughs> here we go. We do have a very unavoidable date with the welding gear. Yeah, we do. There are several areas of rot that desperately need our attention. I don't know how hard it's going to be, or even how long it's going to take yeah. until we get stuck in. No, but we know that the mechanics of the car are basically sound, don't we? But we are going to have to go through everything, aren't we? Oh, and, and the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> and when we've had a look at those, we could have a look at the interior as well, because that's awful, isn't it? And if you're going to put this back on the road, you do not want to be sitting on the floor, do you? No, you definitely don't. Well, a good plan mm. that's going to be executed beautifully can only start with two fantastic cups of tea <laughs> and a tray of biscuits. I like the definition of the tray of biscuits. While Gus gathers an assortment of biscuits that are slightly past their sell-by date, I gather my photographic skills and try to capture the essence of this lived-in legend. It's auction set-up time for the 2CV, which, I've got to say, is not my favourite job, but it's got to be done, so here I am doing it. Turns out I've got some rather nice photographs of the 2CV, so I'm ready to go on that. That's a really good start. And now I've just got to choose the right words for it and be as honest as I can about the car. So I'm going to say that the areas of rust have been sorted, which is currently going to be underway. Interior has had some work done on it, so it's been brought up to speed. And I'm going to describe the outside of it as, being, as having a beautiful patina. It's going to be a five grand or 4995, but followed closely by or nearest offer, and we'll see how we get on with that. Now that Will has committed us to underselling the 2CV, it's time for Gloria to enter the workshop to receive a facelift. Right. All right. Yeah, well... <laughs> It's kind of nice that we've got a car with lots and lots and lots of spare bits. Yes, but it's all got to come out, hasn't it? Yeah, and these seats are so uncomfortable. So I vote we lose the seats at the same time. Yes. And for good access to the welding, the doors. And for good access to the engine? Oh, well, we <laughs> it as well. Let's get it all off, shall we? Yeah! See what it looks like. If only life could be speeded up. We embark on a stripping jamboree, leaving the bare bones of this classic car exposed. It's not entirely good news. Ha! <laughs> right, yeah. See, technically, technically, that's no worse. We can just see it more now, can't we? This is true, <laughs> and that gives me a lot of confidence. I, I was thinking that we might be looking at sort of repair patches in localised areas. Yeah. But it's definitely a bit more than that, yeah. Well, it is worth noting that this end of it does have an observation hatch so that you can work out how fast you're going by looking at the floor, <laughs> which is nice. Well, that's handy, because at the back end, it's got one so you can see if the uh, exhaust hangers become detached or not. 
And I think that was an optional extra. We have our strengths, and I confess to liking the cut and thrust of welding. So that one's down to me. It's a job that requires preparation and persistence. I'm giving the engine a decent service and will cover off all the consumables which probably haven't been touched for years. So just looking inside our air filter. So this is a foam air filter. Foam air filters often have to run in oil. They have to be oiled. But there seems to be an excessive amount of oil in here. And I was just looking in the bottom there. The pressure vent for the engine comes into here, so it vents pressure and also oil as the engine gets older and oil, uh, older and older, into the uh, into the air cleaner uh, to be reburnt in the engine actually, so that nobody notices it. The great thing about cleaning is that it costs very little. Our sponge filter has rather deteriorated, and I, I think it's probably seen better days. So I'm going to have to get a new one. I changed the oil as well. When a buyer looks at a car and sees fresh synthetic in there, it all counts. The 2CV was actually designed to be worked on by farmers. So lots of it's on bolts, but some of it needs a hammer and a chisel. I have the oil out, but the filter is a pain. There must be some sort of uh, special code some sort of key to get in the oil filter off, which maybe if I looked on the internet I could find, but it's in such an awkward place. It <laughs> wouldn't surprise me if it hadn't been changed for a bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've done it. Ooh, yeah. It's a small success. That is coming out, isn't it? It is, yeah. I've cut all the way around the edges. Beautiful. Still means I've got to cut off all the nasty, snarly bits where it joins onto the car, but not entirely certain how far we're going yet, and I've got a feeling it's further... Always. ..than just a floor pan. So it's chop here and cut there, and eventually the 2CV looks even more naked. You're right, it is a flipping banger. Right, sorry to be in your way, Gus. Oh, but, you're not, uh, you're not, you're not. My, uh, my little job's expanding. I basically need to unbolt the front wing to get to my welding areas. It looks dramatic. And it is. It is dramatic. So right that's up. indicators. That is horn. That's better. Yeah, that'd give you better access for servicing the engine, wouldn't it? Yeah, much better. As is always the way, every panel you look at closely is a bit scratchy. What you got, then? <laughs> oh, my right. goodness. Yeah, so seal attaches to the A pillar and to the A panel and to this front cross member as well. Oh, my goodness. And it's all, everything all comes on on that join. Yeah. And to, to get to it, you've got to remove this part of the wing. Wow. Trouble is, that part of the wing goes all the way to the front of the car as well. So yeah, yeah. That's why I've had to have that lot so off. So that's all gone all the way through there? Yeah, look, it's all wobbling around. That's going to be the same on the other side as well, isn't it? Well, I'm not looking at that bit yet. One, <laughs> one, job, one battle at a time, one battle at a time. This is the lesson that we teach ourselves every time we do this. Yeah. A little bit of rust. That's it. And we're going to walk away from the car. A little bit of rust and all this. But we haven't done this. it. No, Again, we haven't. we bought the car and now we've got all the problems. Do you know what time it is? Yes, it's new fan belt time. Oh, I thought it was sweep the floor and go home time. I've got to get a new fan belt. Might as well go home. I'll give you a hand. Brilliant. What a mess you've made of our car. <laughs> so the 2CV is not full of rust, but it's not as clean as a whistle either. Still, it's been a fantastic first day. Day two out of five to turn around our rusty little 2CV. Oh, now then, you see, I was going to finish the engine this morning, but I'm waiting for a filter and a belt. 
And noticing this access panel that you've opened up here, yeah, that would make my life really easy for changing the dampers, wouldn't it? It would make your life a lot easier. It would also get in my way, because I'm working on this side of the car. Well, I mean, I'm just putting it out there. Don't mm -hmm. shoot me, I'm just the messenger. But I'm going to do the other side as well. So let me guess, <laughs> right? <laughs> I've done all just... my good work here, which now you can And it's beautiful, it's beautiful. Don't well, get me wrong. Thank you very much. I mean, effectively, I've just made a massive hole in the bottom of our asset. But no, it, it's, it's no problem, because I do need to cut the other side out. And if I can get over there and crack into that, and you do this side, I can do that side. Brilliant. Good way to start the day, yeah? yeah. You know how this goes. I cut out the rusty bits and then find some more. I know I was poking the fun out of Citroen from inventing a way of carrying three eggs across a field, but in actual fact, this suspension is clever. And it was born at a time when the manufacturers of Europe were looking for innovative and cheap ways of doing things, and this suspension system is exactly that. So basically we have a cylinder with two springs in it. The front spring deals with the front wheel, the back spring with the back wheel. So the front, the wheel is attached to a leading arm, which means that the arm is here, the wheel is here. It's the first thing that hits a bump. And as that wheel hits a bump, it pulls on this rod, shortens this spring, and then is sprung back down again and the back works the same way. Now, there's also a damper. These are the things that take all the shock, and these are the bits that have gone, because they take a hammering, actually. So we're going to have to replace them. You can see that they've gone because there's oil leaking out of them, which means the seals have blown. But it's interesting that as you're cornering a car, so the spring on the inside is being compressed, and the outside expands, so it it stabilises the car. I know everybody says that two CV systems are there, it, they roll all over the road, but they do because the suspension is set up very, very soft because it's for going over a field, as we know. But it's actually a very, very effective system. Unlike some elements of Citroen suspension systems, the dampers are cheap and easy to get hold of, and they bolt on and off with a little persuasion. The front one's got a, repla a retaining plate here, just a little uh, hanger for the, for the suspension unit. But you have to put that on first. Well, it's obvious you have to put it on first because you can't get the nut off with it on there because it's up against the arm. Onto there and onto here. And then put these little 14 mils in here. My other floor pan comes out, and we're sort of making some progress. Well, just quite a lot of holes in the bottom of the car. There are so many holes in this car. It's, I've, I've been through sort of stages of depression and deep <laughs> upsets and anguish, and it's been growing and growing and growing, and I've, I've done all I can. Every single last bit of prepping, and it turns out that now I'm just a couple of panels short of a 2CV. Cool. Well, are you going to go and get them, then? I desperately need to go and get them ASAP now. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the 2CV is well supported in spares, and I've found a place up the road who will hopefully have a few bits we need. <laughs> hello? Hello? Ah, hello there. Hello. Are you the Darren that I spoke to on the phone earlier? I am, and you must be Will. I am. Yeah. Good day to you. Yeah. Well, I've just come through this way, and I can see you've got an enormous amount of stock in this place. It looks looks really impressive. And you've even got a whole body shell up there by the looks of it. Yeah, we do brand new body shells. We do brand new chassis made of license from Citroen galvanized. We do bumpers, tires, brake pipes, you name it, we got it. Right, okay, I'm gonna name it. Floor pans, A, B, C pillars, uh, sills, and that sort of stuff, really. What have you got? Follow me, the panels are round hill. Nice one. Oh, yeah, Will. Seals left and right. Help yourself. So that looks like a left seal. That looks like a right seal to me. What about floors? Yeah, complete floors. Cool, I see. So that's the whole of one side. Yeah. I like that. Cool. 
It was his partner. And that's its little friend. Oh, that is good news. Right, OK, what else do we need? Sea right. post, A and C post repel section. Yes, that's exactly what I need. Let's have a little look at that. Oh, that's brilliant. So I can just cut off the piece that I need yep. and repair the bottom of the post. Well, I think that what we've got here is everything that we need to fix our car. All right, well, if you, if you forget anything, let us know. You've just done a road. Oh, that's brilliant news. OK, well, I'm going to lob this lot in the car. Well, I'll give you a hand. Oh, cheers. So this is all good. I've got my panels. Bad news is that even with nice prices, I've sunk £144 into this project. It's not good. So I'm going to have a look at the discs on the 2CV. Have a look at the pads, take them out, see if they're all right, if they're OK, put them back in. If not, we'll replace them. But interestingly, 2CV's got inboard discs, which means the discs aren't out on the hub by the wheel, inside the wheel. They're bolted to the gearbox, so they run on the drive shaft. The reason being, and this is an old motorsport thing, keeping unsprung weight and sprung weight separate, you have to keep the unsprung weight, which is the wheel, basically this side of the springs, as light as possible, which means to keep it compliant with the road, you can use really light springs. And we were talking earlier about the innovation of this Citroen um, suspension system. It's very light. Well, I'm reliably informed that if I push the... put the screwdriver in here between the pad and the disc and push it back, the piston will go in, which it is, which is good, and then I put it in here and push it back again in the middle, and then you push the spring down and the pad should oh, pop out in your hand. There's a lot of wear left on that, so I think I'll probably take it over to the bench, clean it up and put it back in. The 2CV has a little rust, but its mechanical bones are well on the way to being pretty good. You have to pump the brakes before you set off, as the pistons are pushed right back into the calipers and they'll need to come out. Day three. We're loving our 2CV. Its cleverness and charm winning over huge patches of rust which we have to re-weld. Coming through. Lovely. We don't have a ramp in the workshop to lift the 2CV, but we do have something almost as good. We call it our occasional trolley. That's quite neat, isn't it? Yeah. Brilliant. Right, I'm going to take yeah. these wings off. I'm stripping and cleaning the rear drums. I'm just going to go through the brakes and have a look at them. Actually, I think someone's been in here relatively recently. But I'm going to go through this one, check that everything's all right and that they're adjusted OK, do the other one, then we know we've got the security of knowing when we put everything back together that it will stop properly. Um, so, although someone has been in here recently, they haven't... Uh, they haven't changed anything or, or fixed anything that's been broken because the dust covers on the piston here is all degraded. There's very, very little meat left on the leading edge of this shoe here. So now I've got to enter the world of pain of taking apart the brake lines here um, and trying to get bleed nipples, trying to get new pistons for the wheel here and trying to get new brake shoes. Well, I'm sure we'll be able to get them, but it's time and money, isn't it? If you ever want to know why welding is so expensive, try working on a car like this. Even with good replacement panels, there is so much to do and lots of fiddly bits. The nastiest aspect of this job is replacing the sills. 
The old ones need to be cut out and the new ones need to be fitted accurately. It's a good job on cheap and easy. So this A pillar has got to be shaped to fit on top of this sill. So I'm going to have to mark it, scallop it out so it sits down snugly on there and then can be pushed back into that gap. Also, whilst doing that, remembering that this isn't exactly 90 degrees. It's 88.5 degrees. So it's important to bear that in mind when you mark it out and put it all together. This is a little bit that needs shaping. I've set it up on two blocks of wood here. And if I put this on here with this spacer under here, then I'll get everything aligned really, really nicely. I'm actually just going to mark it by eye to start off with and then start filing it. And then when it gets close, I can then start getting it really accurate and getting that 88 and a half degrees just so. This now fits really nicely onto the top of the sill. I've cut it down to a little bit longer than I need because I now need to fine mark it. And when you get to this level, a marker pen is too fast. So a little fine line pencil is perfect. Just get in there behind it. Tinsy wincy little line. I can see it, I can cut it, I can fit it. And this is a very important bit. This is called internal sleeving. This piece of metal is going to be slid inside of this, hidden away. The whole thing's going to be put into place, and then this is going to be pushed back out like this, up into this section here. But it's very important to make it really sound and secure. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, thank you very much. Top of work of art. Well, it's been taking some time, but uh, I think it's worth it. Yeah, no, definitely. It's going to make the car worth something, isn't it? Mm. Um, I've done the brakes. I'm just waiting for shoes. So, shall we go? Well, uh, I would love to say yes and be out of here, but to make a decent work of art, you've got to put a lot more time and effort into it. This yeah. one isn't quite there yet, so... I'm feeling a bit sprightly. I might carry on for a couple more hours and see if I can get this job finished. Shall I bring some croissants in in the morning? I think that would be an absolute must. <laughs> All right, I'll see you later. See you later. Have a good one. Can it really only be day four? It feels like 44. Will's busy and I'm waiting on bits, so it's time for a trip out. Well, I brought the seats with me and I'm going to go down to the 2CV shop. Darren down there said that he'd show me how to put new donuts in and recover the seats. And I know it's normally Will's thing, but I thought I'd show Willing, see what goes on. 
I'm rather regretting putting them in the Mini, though, with the top down, because the degraded foam is swirling around in the cabin, and I think I've swallowed most of it. The two CV seats are almost as simple as a deck chair, but if you get the refurb technique wrong, you'll lose the little comfort that they do have. Hello, Jay. Hi. You all right? Yeah, I see you're already on one. Yes, yeah, no, always. Let's... Older than ours, though, is it? Yes, much, yes. Look at this, this is a disaster. It's yes. absolutely falling apart. Yeah, they, they normally look like that after a while. So you're going to show me how to do it then? Yeah, yeah, by all means. Okay, yeah, but yeah, I know nothing yeah. about what I'm doing. Yeah, no, no, it's just it's, it's it's just a process. Jay and I get rid of the hangers and clips, and the seats can be stripped. They're just held on with these wires. Your one's a bit bent, but oh, we, we can always straighten that. So these, they, they... Yeah, that just just bend it out. That's it. Oh, I see. Yeah. And then it just pulls out. Yeah, just pulls out. There, it slides out. And then Again. there's another one so... if you want in the front as well. There you go. And then you can just peel the seat cover off. Oh, and then there's the dust. <laughs> That's going to go in the bin, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are still salvageable parts of the chair left. This is the aerial, is it? The antenna? Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> it, <for> DAB. <laughs> but we'll keep the, keep the back, cos that's original. Yeah, I like there's it. There's nothing wrong with it. There you go. And that's it? That's it. Wow. Right, so what have we got here? So this is like the new seat. Base webbing. Oh, OK. Um, you know, this is, uh, then we've got the little rods that go up through. It only takes 15 minutes for us to rebuild the chair frame. We fit new rubber donuts. <laughs> foam. <laughs> and finally, seat covers. It's cost us £300. Not buttons, but it's a tangible sign of quality in the cabin. That is amazing. I mean, yeah, so simple, so brilliant. That's Good it. Man. It really is, yeah. It absolutely transforms it. Um, can I bring the rest in? Yes, please do. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. I, well, I might as well take yeah, this you, with you me. Can, might yeah, I? you can take Thank that. Thank you. <laughs> Covering the seat fits in perfectly with Citroen's philosophy for the 2CV. It's incredibly simple and it's incredibly effective. Lovely. When Gus and I got this car, now, the engine was running, but it was running a bit rough. And the common fault with things like this is often the points adjustment. Now, on most cars, the points are within a distributor underneath a little plastic cap. You can take that off and get to it all very easily. On a Citroen 2CV, the points are well hidden. They're behind a grill, behind a fan, behind the fan belt, then behind this cover. And this is the reason that the maintenance that they need on a regular basis is often ignored. That is where the points live, inside there. This bit here holds the points. Points just the same as any other set of points in any other car. The bits that wear, though, are the little heel here, which rubs against the lobes, which push it open and close, and the contactors, which kind of spark a road and wear as well. Anyway, that to one side, because what's clever about this system is behind here. Most cars have got a vacuum operated system, which moves the back plate, which can adjust the timing as the engine is running, and this is speed-related. This one's clever because it's got counterbalance weights which are operated centrifugally. So when the engine runs faster, this bit turns like that. And what happens is at a slow speed, it advances the timing up, and at a high speed, it backs the timing off very, very slightly, therefore keeping the engine running smoothly throughout the entire rev range. And because all of this lot is so tricky to get to, I'm going to take it all out and change it for something which is very modern and relatively maintenance-free. 
So we're swapping it over to electronic ignition. Solid state tech for delivering a spark in a much more reliable way. Because ignition coils lose a bit of their vigour with age, it's only sensible to fit a new one. The maintenance-free electronic points take nothing away from the purest nature of the 2CV. Cost, around about 100 quid. You need to set the position of the flywheel by inserting this little rod. Another clever Citroen idea. So with everything now set in exactly the right position, it just leaves the timing to be set. And this is the absolute beautiful simplicity of the whole thing. Start off from the fully anti-clockwise position and then very slowly and carefully rotate it clockwise until the LED light comes on there. And without turning it any further than that, I keep it in exactly that position. I can now lock it off and the timing is set perfectly. So it's the big one. One final day to sort the Citroen out. You're wondering if I've got the keys in my pocket, aren't you? No, don't worry, I've got them in mine. See? Cool. You know what? It occurred to me on the way back over, we've got to get this car out today. Well, we're in a good position now, aren't we? We are ready for the last dash on it. Yeah, well, we should, um... Crack on, shouldn't we? We should, yeah. My brake parts are here, and that's all good to go. The mounts and seats go in. And this rear bench has been re-upholstered as well. You're in. Hey! Fantastic. Well done. Doors rather brilliantly slide in. The front doors bolt on. Door shut now. Trims. Four unpainted Citroen wheels. Panels showing their original patina. Here come the front wings. Oh, yes. All dents and age-related marks are welcome. Just the bonnet, and it soon starts looking like a car again. And boy, what a car, but has it cost us? The purchase price was £2,500. We spent £144 on panels, £300 on the seats, £280 on other spares. That sounds a lot like £3,224. Underneath, it's sorted, but on the outside, it looks exactly the same. <laughs> You've got to love a 2CV, haven't you? Well, some might. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, they are really noisy. They are. They're incredibly slow. Definitely. Probably not that great in a crash. No. Probably. <laughs> and they just adore going rusty. But this is a stone-cold classic classic, isn't it? And I think it was the right choice for us, I really do. We've taken it for what it is. We haven't tried to make it brand new. 
we've embraced its rough and ready thing. Yeah, I think so. And underneath, it's fantastically solid now, isn't it? Yeah, it's good, it's clean, it's like a modern rat, isn't it? I mean, I think this is more middle-class rat, actually, yeah. <laughs> don't you? But I think we should stop analysing it and maybe we should drive it because we've got to make sure it's reliable because no-one's going to buy a broken car, aren't they? Apart from us. Bad news. Will is driving. To say it's fun to drive is one thing. Exciting, that's another thing. Slightly noisy at times. But, you know, you've got to go through the whole process of trying to find the right gear. Yep. Which feels like it's connected with a rubber band. Yeah. Uh, you've, you've got to get through the whole fear experience of approaching a corner, right? We're just about to do one. Ready? Oh, lot of be rolly over thing. That puts a lot of people off. I think it just it's just had a life, hasn't it? And I like that. And in a sea of modern cars which have no personality whatsoever, it's a breath of fresh air for me. Yes. Yeah, this is a very desirable car. I mean it's peachy with a few dings. Exactly. So, uh, are we getting on with selling it though, our little peach? Um, well we haven't had a nibble yet, but well, not at the price that we want. I have had a few people phone me up and say, let me know when you've finished it, and yeah. I know someone who wants one. So. Oh cool, okay. And uh, have you called it? No, not yet. I thought I'd wait and see whether it broke. <laughs> broke down first. <laughs> <laughs> we get some hits eventually, but it takes time. Hello? Uh, yes, it is. It's still available and ready ready to be purchased at the moment. It is a 1989 car. In fact, I'm stood here with this at the moment and it's looking fantastic, I must say. Cool. Do, would you like to come and have a look at it at some point or...? Cool, brilliant. Well, thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. And as you would expect, on a car like this, the buyers want to see details. This one can't inspect the car so they spec out the images they'd like to see. But do they get us a deal? There's a little horse trading, but we do sell the 2CV for £4,900, a profit of over £1,500. And we can live with that 